Hey everybody, it's Agent Patty here again with some new tips on how to make a drip campaign in Chime. So I recently came over to Real Broker and uh, I'm really excited to be here and start coaching for them, but I realized they use Chime and I needed to learn it, so I've been busting a hump and learning it real well. So today I'm going to show you how to put in a, or create your own drip campaign. We're gonna go through um, basically how to get your campaign ready to get into the into the system first and then I'm going to show you how to add an image, how to hyperlink that image, I'm going to show you how to add a video, uh, I'm going to show you how to add listings to the drip campaign and how to schedule it at all and uh, anything else that I happen to come up with as I'm going along because I tend to like really dig deep and I hope you are going to enjoy this. So. Uh, let's get started and by the way if you want more tips or anything like this related to your favorite CRM make sure and let me know in the comments but be sure that you subscribe and if you are looking to get a free drip campaign from me make sure you check the comments out here and make sure that you check out my new book drip campaign secrets you can get it at dripcampaignsecrets.com you're going to get all kinds of tips on setting up your CRM doesn't matter which one you're using and also a really deep dive on creating really powerful and engaging and responsive drip campaigns. So make sure you check that out, dripcampaignsecrets.com. All right, are we ready to jump into Chime? Let's do it. Okay, welcome to the back end dashboard of Chime. If you've got a Chime account, this probably looks familiar to you. If not, then I guess you're new to this. Just <laughs> so uh, at any rate, I am in the settings area. So let me just explain a little bit about the way I um, usually will make my drip campaigns inside of Chime. Chime gives you an option to be able to build them and put the templates in at the time that you're building them. I personally don't like doing it that way because I like to be able to create all my templates ahead of time. Uh, because I haven't been able to figure out a way to save it as a template while I'm building out the campaign. So I like to use some of my templates more than once. So once it goes into a campaign, if I don't save it as a template, I can't use it again. So I've got to go rebuild it. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and create all my templates first and then build the campaign second. Um, which is different than what you're seeing in almost every other training out there in uh, Chime world. Okay, so that's really important. The other thing I want to be aware, you want to be aware of on settings, uh, if you scroll down, your signature line is already built. And 99% of the time, I haven't figured out when it doesn't show up, but there is ways to make a setting say, oh, add it right here, apply the signature to all outgoing emails. It seems to me it's always being applied whether this is checked or not. So that said, you don't want to put a field in the emails that will pull in an extra uh, signature line, right? So you can edit it here too. You can put whatever you want. Uh, yes, I am an agent here at Real, so um, uh, it's already been set up for me this way. Um, uh, so you just want to make sure you've got this set up and ready to go because it's automatically going to pull in. So whatever you want in here, make sure it's set up ahead of time. I also do not recommend you ever, ever, ever type in manually your signature line into templates because if you ever change anything about yourself, uh, maybe you got a new phone number, maybe you got a new email address, maybe you want to put a new picture in. Guess what? You got to go into every single template and do that. Nobody wants to do that. That's too time consuming. So don't do that. Okay. All right. So our first thing is that we're going to actually create our templates on a Word document. And in my case, I do. I have a sphere campaign, a two year sphere campaign that um, either you might be putting in because you got it from me uh somewhere along the lines um so what i'm going to do is show you how i'm going to take this campaign and put it in if you've got your own campaign i'm just going to give you a couple tips uh either way you want to make sure that you have your campaign ready already written somewhere you don't want to be copying and or uh, building these templates up as you're going along building your drip campaign that is too time consuming and another thing that i do is that i make sure that I have all the fields in the way I want them. And so this particular template has all the fields in it already set up specifically to help me personalize my campaign inside of Chime. So that means the first name field, for instance, this is a merge field code. This is a first name field, and this is going to automatically personalize every single email and text that I have in the system. 
uh, and pulled the information in from the contact card information inside of Chime. So anytime I want to turn on drip campaign for either one or 10 people, it's going to automatically pull their first name in. Okay. Now you'll see here that I do have the signature field here. So you would want to put this field in the bottom of your email. So um, there is some settings inside of Chime that will give you an option to be sure that it pulls from your profile. It will pull from your Chime profile area. So be sure that you do get that added to your template so that it does pull automatically from that area. Um, you can choose at this point because your name is going to pull in if you wanted to do a search and replace for this and put your name in instead of letting the system pull it in because it's already pulling in here. By the way, you're wondering if you're wondering where I'm getting these, let me go over here really quick and show you. Um, in here, you're going up to settings. You're going to go over here to email templates. And then uh, here, if I was to create a new template, I would go to um, add a new template. And then down here in the body, I'm going to go over here to variable. And then I'm going to first leads first name. So that's where I got that. And if I wanted any information about myself, I would come over here to agent variable. And I could put my own email, my first, I could put all this information in if I want to. So if I want my website link to pull in automatically, I'd put it here, which I probably would use this one because if you ever change your website link, you just go to the settings and do it and it'll pull it automatically. So everything about you is pulling from your profile. So make sure your profile is right. And then you can just pull things in from here if you want to. Um, here's that signature line that you would put in. Okay. So if you understand that, that's where I've got these from. Let's go back over to the template. So what I'm saying is, even though the system's automatically going to pull your name in, you could, if you wanted to, do a search and replace right here. So I'm going to do copy. Uh, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to go up to, I'm in Word. you got to make sure, let me, let me go ahead and pull this up a little bit. you got to make sure that you are on the home screen, uh, or, and then go over here to replace and click on replace if you paste in um well see this happened to me earlier so let's just if you paste it in exactly how you want to replace it then you can put in your name instead but make it look right not not like that then hit replace all every place that i've ever mentioned my own personal name and to be honest with you i don't do it that often it's mostly in a text so it's replacing it in all the text templates that i have in this in here this merge or this sphere campaign only sends out two texts a year. Uh, so because I'm sending one template out a month and two texts a year. Okay. So that's what the sphere campaign is going to do. It's one thing a month, two texts a year. So they're going to get one email a month. All right. Now your brokerage, if you like me, I'm at real. So, um, I want my, if I want my brokerage in, I could just, uh, put this, I, I'll probably want to replace this out. So I'm going to copy this um, because I could not, there was no spot for brokerage to pull in automatically into the letter. And the brokerage is actually going into the templates of the text, the text templates. So you want to make sure you've, you've replaced that. So let's go ahead and replace that out. And it keeps doing that period. Oh, I think it's pulling in that bullet point is why. So if I'm at real broker, I'm going to put real broker AZ because that's where I live and I'm going to replace it all. So you'll see it's replacing it. I've only brought it up apparently three times in here. Um, close. It is good to really put your brokerage name into all of the text, but I figure once I've told them once, they should be able to, I just, your local agent kind of thing. Now, in this particular letter, I actually went in and put the city in, and it is in a field, but do you do, you don't want to leave it like this because this city is actually more for you. Where do you work? So that's what I want you to do is replace out this city on all the places that you work. So uh, I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to go to replace. And I'm going to put the city in. Actually, I don't want that to happen again because the bullet's going to show up. So I'm just going to type in city. And then I'm going to put in the area, right? So I work in Scottsdale, Arizona. Now, where you work might be a zip code. It might be the Tri-Cities. I mean, you don't have to put a city in here if you don't want to. Um, but this is what I do. So I'm going to replace all with Scottsdale. And... Uh, it made 30, you got to go forward and backward because it's going down and then it's going to come back up, make sure it catches everything. So 33 times 
I have pulled in the city in this so that it will personalize in my letters. Okay, down here in my website, I'm going to let the system pull my website in because if I decide to put a new website in here and I don't use the Chime website, I've got like four different real estate websites. So I might say, I really don't want to use that one site anymore. I want to use this site. So I'm going to go into the profile and change what my website is. Um, so I could, if I could do that. Now, I am a little concerned because Chime may not, might just assume I'm using the Chime website. <laughs> So we ought to make sure that it knows what website you're using. Let me just go into the settings really quick and just see if it gives me an option to change my website out. I don't think it does. It just automatically will pull in the Chime website there. So that's up to you if you even want to use it um, because I think it's automatically going to pull in the Chime information. It's like down here, I might want to add my website down here. Um, so I could put my website down here. Um, okay, cool. Now, what are we going to do next? All right, so let's head down. I did want to mention to you that I do have drip campaigns for all CRMs, including Chime. So I've got buyer campaigns, seller campaigns, FISBOs, tenant rentals, uh, holiday ones. I've got everything you need. So if you're looking for better, more responsive campaigns, you can get them at realestatedripmail.com. Go check them out. Um, in the meantime, so as I'm scrolling down, you're going to notice that um, everything pulled in the way it should have pulled in. So you can see Scottsdale area real estate, real estate specialist, Patty Sampson, because I am sending one thing a month. It's kind of more of a newsletter email. Um, and I've got photos and all kinds of stuff that I might put into this. It's informational. It's stuff that's going to help them throughout the year for various things and not necessarily always real estate, FYI. Um, but so... Now that I've done this, I don't need to go into my Chime uh, templates as I'm creating them and try to put in all those fields. Notice the first name field has stayed there because I need that in the letter. So, but everything else pulled in what I wanted it to pull in, right? So when I do a copy and paste of this, now what I'm going to do um, <clears throat> is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to highlight all the way. In this case, this is how I write my campaigns. I'm going to highlight all the way down. Now, this is the name of the campaign. This is the subject line of the campaign. And this is the salutation, right? So I am going to take it and scroll all the way down to the end. And you'll notice down in my letter, um, I put the first name field in three times in my letters. And I'll tell you how and why this, will, this is in a minute. So I'm going to copy this right here. Now, I'm heading over to my Chime account. And I'm going to go up to my settings. I'm going over to the left because remember, I'm doing my templates first. And I'm going to go to email. And then I'm going to uh, get ready to create my campaign. All right, so we're going to make sure we're up at our settings because we're starting with our templates. We're going over to emails. We click on that and we're going to go here and add a template. It's that simple. Now we're just going to paste everything in. So uh, I, I want, want to make sure that you did grab when you copied all the way down to the signature line. Okay, so make sure that's there. And then we're going to come back up here and grab this and hit this and cut it out, right? And we're going to just paste it in up here. Now, here's the problem that not always does the description fit because you only got like 40 characters up here, which kind of stinks. So if it's a little long, that's okay. Just make sure... Uh, you, you might sh need to shorten it up by sell um, during high rates. That's what this was high at high rates at high rates. So for some reason it doesn't pull everything in. That's why, uh, which is kind of annoying. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Let's go ahead here and hit cut on the subject line. So we're going to paste that in. Now I mentioned earlier, you got three spots where the email or where the first name goes. I always love putting in the subject line. Always. It will not automatically load in in order for you to do it. If it's not, if you're not copying and pasting, you need to actually grab it here and put it in there, copy and then paste it in. If you don't have your templates made like mine are. So just heads up on that. Now, you do want to go through to bet if you're pulling it from your Word document. Um, I noticed that it does have a few issues with the uh, copying over of the bullet points, so it kind of acts up a little bit. <laughs> so you might want to check that so that it, it spaces correctly when you do that. Just don't hit return right at the beginning, I noticed. So if you do have 
bullet points. Just hit return at the end of a line, not at the beginning, and it won't screw up the bullet pointing or whatever. It's, I'm not just not sure it's pulling all the bullet points in right. But sometimes the spacing is a little weird. It doesn't look like it does in Word. So just keep that in mind as you're trying to get this figured out. Now you also notice the photograph that I had in here did not pull through, so we're going to have to bring that back in. So you're going to want to make sure that you've saved the photograph um, on your computer. I tried to paste it in, copy and paste. It just doesn't want to do it. Okay, so uh, we've got everything in there. So that means I need to add it. So I've already added it to the system, but I'm going to show you some else, something else that seems a little glitchy in here. you got to love our software, right? I want to put the home buying photo. I had two photos. So in the letter... If you go back to the letter, I just went into the letter and I right clicked on it and I saved it on my computer. So now I need to bring it in. So I'm going to go here where the photo is, right? And I'm going to click photo and I'm going to go to my templates and I'm going to just, you could drag it in or you could just go to it and, and bring it in here. So here's the photo and I'm going to click on it. Now it's kind of big, so I'm going to click back on it here. It's going to give you an option to drop it down in size. So you can go up or down based on the size of it. I think it always comes in at 100%. I also want to center it, so I'm going to click on it again, and I'm going to hit the center so that it ends up in the center of this email. Okay, pretty easy. Uh, so that did that, and let's make sure everything else looks good spacing-wise. So I'm going to put another space there. And if I wanted to grab that other uh, picture in the email, I could do that. Or I just scrolled down here. There was two pictures in here. I right click on it and save it. Save picture as, and then I'm just going to put it in my downloads here. And I'll just put it email one, two, because that's the second one. Okay. And then come back in and let's go ahead and add that picture here. Is it period or something? I don't want what's going on there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add it. So you just got to go to my templates and click here and I'll show you the weird glitch thing. Okay. So if I hit open and that's too big too. So let's drop that down in size and then let's center that too. So we'll center it. Okay. Center it. Um, okay. So <clears throat> what I noticed was though, if you had added pictures and you try to add them back in, and you're saving it as a template when you go to try to save it like look this was this was very glitchy looking to me if i hit images uploaded via email that were previously in here uh, that i added now i didn't add this via email i uploaded it for so for whatever reason it doesn't like it but if i go and i choose this one try to add it let's insert that image it's real tiny like it it doesn't really it's it's not really what i want see because you'll notice it's tiny inside this big box so that didn't work i didn't like it so i'm not using it like that i'm just uploading the new pictures as i'm going along so also i wanted to show you right before the signature i want to add a button to take people to so that they can look at properties so i love this i've already made a button and i did it in canva so i'm going to go back to my templates and click on this and i'm going to drag that button in right here and hit open and then I you could leave it here I probably leave it here on the left hand side but click on it again and then we want to click on this which is going to hyperlink it and so we want to take it to a search page with results like on your IDX website if you have your chime site go to your site grab a link off of there to the location of where you normally work Make sure you've got a bunch of listings there and that they can actually save a search if they want to. This is driving people to your site and you just need to make it light, nice and clear. So just go to Canva, create this image. And uh, if you don't use Canva, it, you, you just go Google how to do it. I've probably done videos on it myself, but go ahead and, and check it out. Put the link in there because that'll drive people over there. And that's going to be great because you want this to happen. You want activity sent over to your site so whatever site you want to send it to go ahead and add that all right so i'm not going to actually put a url in there right now but you can do it and then put your signature underneath it so that way they're seeing this button before they get to the bottom of the email okay because they probably won't go under your email and look what's under there all right so the only last thing i wanted to do is if you decided you wanted to put a video in here instead or you know in addition to the photographs i'm just going to show you how to do this you're going to just go here and there is a spot right here it says insert youtube video boom 
grab your URL. So obviously you got to have your video made. You need to upload it to YouTube. Make sure that it's public because if they click on it, it's not public. They're not going to see it. And then um, put that link in there and uh, it, it will automatically load in. So let me go grab a video and let's see how it looks. All right. So I went ahead and added in one of mine that I've got, which is about how to create holiday campaigns. I'm actually going to show you how to create holiday campaigns inside of Chime eventually. I don't have a, I don't have the video done, but anyway, so this is what it looks like, right? So if I want to preview, let's see what the preview email looks like. So it's a little bit distorted. It's not like the best looking thumbnail in the world, but the thumbnail is there. So if you play it, it should, it's going to, you're going to click on, it's going to take people over to YouTube, right? So anyway, that's just something to know what's going to happen when somebody um, actually clicks on it, right? Oops, I'm trying to get back to Chime. Let's get back to Chime. So, yeah, so that's what it looks like when you do it, all right? So we're all done with the letter. We're pretty much done. We've done everything we want. So let's go ahead and save that. All right, so that's it. If I wanted to, I could go back and put that star in. I like to track all of my templates by putting that star in, but because we're kind of short on space, it's a little challenging because it won't let me put a lot in here so uh you've got you're really limited on space i think it was like 40 characters it's not much so anyway just keep that in mind as you're doing this all right so i went ahead and created the second email already so that one's ready to go and um, so now i'm going to show you how to add a text all right so i'm going to go ahead and add a template so we're going over to we're going over to text we're going into text templates and we're going to add a template so we need to do the same thing here where i went over and I had copied out the first text that I have. And um, I do put an opt out when it's the first text that goes out of my campaigns just to give them an option to opt out because I don't know if they're wanting it. Uh, and that's just to keep me out of legal trouble. Do you realize that the fees for texting, if people didn't ask for it, not good. All right, so I'm going to copy that out and I'm going to paste it in for the name of the text, right? So I got sphere text number one. And I usually do put that little star. I did go back to the other templates and do that. Now you're gonna notice it is pulling in the first name uh, right here for whatever reason. I had an issue with this particular template when I was doing it. So I needed to type this back in. I wanna keep it that way. Hope you're doing well. I do have a little space I gotta deal with there. So let's fix that. And then uh, you have an option here to add images, which is really nice because image sending is expensive <laughs> so if you can add an image you want to that's fine but i honestly just don't think i'd get too fancy here we want it to look like you really meant to send it and the more crop you put in the less chance you're going to have of your text templates you know gonna get response we want to put a question in get a response and all of that so let's go ahead and hit save all right so we've added texts we've added emails now we're going to create our campaign so now we have our templates. We can scroll over up to, we're going to go up to campaigns and we're going to smart plans and we're going to add a new smart plan. And this is just going to be a standard plan. I'm not going to get into these other ones on this particular video. So let's go ahead and hit start. And this is going to be a, a sphere campaign. So again, I put a star so I know where all my stuff is sphere campaign and I'll just put two year because this is in the end going to be a two year campaign. Now, who is this going to be for? It could be all, which is in this case, this could be used for any particular lead or contact I have in my database. So it is an all. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. That's in the event, I, but I'm not going to activate it. So, I mean, so that it runs automatically on anything. Uh, if you're, if you have a team in my case, you know, I don't have a team, but you cannot share my templates with your team members. Um, you can't do that. You have to contact me to get the rights to do that. So if you have this from me that I gave you, you need to contact me to get the rights to do that. Otherwise it is your plan. Now, if you're making your own, that's a, your own thing. Now, again, this is a sphere campaign. So that the way that I'm going to make this work is not necessarily based on a buyer or a seller or anything real special. However, if you are putting in a buyer campaign, then you want to make sure it's marked as a buyer or a seller or whatever you think it's going to be used for. So this is actually going to become important to you if you want to trigger a template or a campaign to turn on based on the lead type that might be coming in. If you want to trigger it on automatically, 
In this case, most of the time on this sphere campaign, we're probably going to be manually turning it on. But again, um, this is something to be sure that you have set up. Make sure you understand how things automate in here when camp when leads get added to the system is really key. Because you could also auto pause it, lead responds or reaches out. I don't personally do that on this kind of campaign and almost no campaigns do I automatically turn off because you might get somebody who texts you back saying, I'm on the road right now and driving and it's going to shut your campaign off. I would personally rather want to come in here and do it myself. The source, so if you change the source, which is kind of strange, I'm not sure why you would ever change a source unless it goes from... I don't even know why you would even do that because unless somebody signed up more than once. So I probably wouldn't do that. An outbound call is logged. So that could be a good excuse to turn off your campaign. Not always. The leads pipeline changes. So that would probably be a good excuse. So if it goes from an active buyer to an active seller, that would matter. Same thing with tags possibly, but you'll just really need to work that out. How you're going to be working uh, your business is really a matter of what's going to work here. All right. All right. So it's already set up to put our first step in. So we're going to now let's click on here. What choices do we have to add? We have add an email, add a reminder to send an email, which is a ridiculous thing. I don't know why you'd ever do that. Um, a call at this is a reminder to make a call. This is to send a direct letter. This is to change a pipeline. So you're basically sending people in different directions. Don't normally see that happening necessarily um, unless you know that they're going to go from a seller to a buyer for some reason. I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't add that to a campaign. You could add a property alert to this if you knew that somebody was going to be looking at homes for a sphere campaign doesn't make sense to do that but if you're doing a buyer campaign you could so i'm going to do another video on how to do that but you could add a buyer alert in here if you wanted to other i'm not even sure i guess it's just whatever you want it to be but let's see what else is on here text that's we're going to do the auto text and we're going to do the email in this campaign this is a reminder to send a text. This is, I guess you can send a postcard out of the system. This is sending things to third party software that will get the two systems talking to each other. AI assistant action, which you could do, you could turn it on and turn it off and all that, which I'm not getting into on this video. You could reassign this to a new group. If you have a group set up in here, which is basically kind of like, a, you know, a similar people, right? You can start another smart campaign. So if you knew that maybe you were, these people were going to be also buyers, the sphere campaign, you could turn on a sphere campaign. That's all. I'm sorry. You could turn on the sphere campaign. You could also turn on a buyer campaign, which would be cool. And then there's a checklist that you can add to this if you wanted to check off things that are going on. And I have not experienced this or used it, so I'm not going to talk about it right now. <laughs> um, but you can add a checklist to it. Let's just click on it for fun. Oh, so you can add in things that are just going to be reminders, I guess, to people. So that's cool. But this is going to be an email. And so this is the cool part. Now creating this is going to be pretty quick. So... If I go to template and you'll notice uh, right here, if I type in the word sphere, every sphere template I ever did are going to pop up. And I know they're mine because I put a star there. So you'll see I see sphere one email. There it is. Boom. It's in. Okay. And you can see I scroll down. You see everything's in here the way it should go. Okay. You won't see the signature until it gets sent. So don't worry about it right now. Okay. Everything looks fine. If it looks funky, then you just need to fix it before you hit save on it. All right. So everything's good. I don't need to do anything else. This is way quicker. Oh, by the way, if you wanted to add family members to this, this would mean that there were already family member emails in the person's account. Then that wouldn't be a bad idea. So you might want to click that if you want the family member to get it. So really dependent on whether or not you're tracking that stuff or not. All right. So everything went in fine. I'm going to go ahead down here and it's save. All right. So when I turn on the campaign, it's just going to automatically send that right away. It just says immediately. So I've just left that. So I'm now going to add my next step. And my next step is actually a text. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go down and say, I want to send an auto text. I don't just do this and remind myself. I add it. That just doesn't seem like, that seems like a big old fat waste of time. <laughs> so just do an auto text. And we're going to go to the template and find that second text. So if I type in sphere, I'll find that text. I just have the one in here. 
but you're going to keep going and putting in all these templates in order. Now, this is going to go, I set up my campaign so that the first text, the two texts I send go on the same time, pretty much at the same time that I send the previous email. So if I can do that. Now, if I go here, I can say immediately. So that's how I set it up. But if I wanted to wait a day and send this tomorrow, I don't do that on this kind of thing. I usually will send it at the same time. That's totally up to you when you're setting up your campaign. But I will go ahead and say, don't send this, uh, make sure they only get a text during a certain time of day. I think eight's a little early, so I'm gonna go eight. Um, eight's a little late, so I'm gonna actually change the time on that to maybe six, okay? And it is gonna be based on where you live, where you live, okay? So keep that in mind, because if you get a lot of people that you're in the East Coast or you're on the West Coast, you get a lot of people that are on the East Coast or the other way around, you're going to be sending this out at a time that may not be the best time for those people. It just depends on that lead source, really. Okay, so let's add another step. And this one, I do want to delay 30 days. So whenever I turn this on, it's just going to wait 30 days before it sends the next thing. And I like sending things between 10 and 11 in general, by the way, because it's just, it's after breakfast when they or it's after morning when they're not deleting everything under the sun and it's after lunch it's before lunch too so that's good so I send it like sometime between 10 and 11 and if I didn't do that on that first one I will do that text is a little different I should probably come back up here and fix that real quick so I have the time on there oh it's actually sending immediately I'm pretty sure I'm not going to turn this on if it's outside the window of hours that I don't want to work <laughs> all right so we're going back now to template number two and we're just going to keep doing this until we get all of our camp templates in here so for some reason I have sphere email one in here twice oh this is email two this is because it's year one so I need to fix that so it's a little clearer it's year one letter two this is the problem from here you can't see it so I'll have to come in here and uh, fix these letters so that you will see it is sphere two, year one. So I'll straighten that out so that's clear when you guys add them if you're using my campaigns and templates. So I'm going down, everything looks good, fine, great, and hit save, all right? Now, campaign is done, ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit all on this again because it's good for anybody. I want to make sure that, but when I do turn it on, it's just gonna it's gonna be manual anyway. So it's not gonna trigger anything because I'd have to tell it to do something if I'm going to do it. Okay. So that is how you create your Chime campaign. It's not as difficult if you get your campaign ready ahead of time and make sure and follow my instructions. But I think you should be good to go and you should be able to rock and roll with this and then you can just turn it on for your leads. All right, so now we just gotta be sure that you've gone up and saved the campaign. Once you've saved it, it'll be in your list, right? So let me just show you how to turn this on for, for people. If you go over to people, I just am new here, so I'm still trying to add people in. I've got everybody in my other CRM right now. So I'm gonna go up to my smart, I'm gonna go into the person, I'm gonna go to my smart plans, I'm gonna hit plus right here. And then I need to go to my plans and my sphere campaign is right there. So if I just click on that, it will add it. And I just hit start and boom, it's going to start. So the email and the text and everything should just go out automatically. and We should be ready to rock and roll. So again, it's really dependent on the kind of campaign that you're building on how this is scheduled out. So I'll do another video on, actually I do have other videos out in YouTube on how to create a buyer campaign I think I did so go check that one out but I'll do I'll be doing way more videos in the future so definitely keep an eye out for those and again if you guys need any help on any CRM or you want more drip campaigns make sure that you check out realestatedripmail.com and I'll be there to help you out because you can get all my campaigns and everything that I've done in my own successful business see that book over there I wrote a book that's how much I've done <laughs> All right, hopefully that helps you and we look forward to uh, helping you out. Again, it's dripcampaignsecrets.com if you're interested in the book. And if you need any more help, just reach me down below. Okay, talk to you later.